is it, Ed? Somebody left a baby on our doorstep. Well, get rid of it. I think you better come out here. There's nobody around. Samantha? Please come downstairs. The guests are all arriving, and we don't want to disappoint them. Honey, I know that you're upset, but you and Daddy and I, we can all talk about it after the party, all right? There's nothing to talk about, Mom. Honey, you know we love you. Just leave me alone. Hello, Mom and Dad. Or should I say Mr. and Mrs. Stig? Today is May 19th. You say it's my birthday. You've just told me the worst news of my life. Samantha, you've always been a good daughter to us. Honey, the very best. As good a daughter as one could possibly hope for. Thanks. You've been OK parents. Thanks. Uh, you want a beer, Sam? Dad, it's 10 in the morning. Oh. <laughs> so it is. What is it? What's wrong? You know, after your mother and I got married, we we tried for several years to have children, but I guess I guess it just wasn't meant to be, huh? And finally, after we stopped trying, you came along. No, I know that, Dad. <laughs> 
Yeah, of course you do, Sam. That's, that's why I'm telling you. Get to the point. Honey, I really think that, you know, we could just wait till after the party. She has a right to know. Know what? Samantha, as much as your mother and I have always wanted children, the, the truth is that, well, we never could. So we adopted you. Walter, I, mean, I didn't adopt her, honey. You're not adopted. <laughs> yeah, you, you're, not, you're not really adopted, uh, but, uh, you see, we've always loved you as if you were our own flesh and blood, but the fact of the matter is that we're not your real parents. Walter, we are her real parents. I mean, we've loved her, we raised her, honey. <laughs> you belong to us. Stop it. Stop it. I don't believe this. Well, it's true, honey. So where did I come from? We don't know, Sam. Somebody left you on our doorstep in a, in a wicker basket. Oh, honey, you were the most adorable little baby, all wrapped up in a blue Tell me blanket. this isn't happening. This is not happening. I have a birth certificate. Uh, no, you don't. Father O'Rourke took care of that. It's forged. So much for Samantha Stick. I have no more identity than Phoenicia or Herman or Mildred over here. And what's worse is I've spent 21 years thinking I'm someone I'm not. Honey, you're not abusing the goldfish, are you? Mom! All right, all right, all right. Look, I, I, I just, honey, I, I just want to make sure you're all right, OK? So now I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to be with the guests. And we're going to be waiting for you, all right? As I look back on my pathetic excuse for a life, I think I always suspected that something about me was different. Don't do it, fathead. You're just gonna kill yourself. While my best friend Henry sat in his room chained to his cello, I was struggling with life's great mysteries. If he can do it, I can do it. Or it can't be done at all. Okay, but if you end up in the Pearl Mother's Roses, you're done for. I think this belongs to you. Only I never solved any mysteries. Samantha. I just struggled. This is nuts. Come on, Henry. Bombs away. It's hot in here. How are you going to get out of those handcuffs? If Houdini could do it, I can do it. Or it can't be done at all. Fine. See you next weekend, huh? Sure. All right. Samantha! Samantha! Sam! Henry, what's the matter? Walter, Samantha's in there! Oh, no, not again! Sam? Samantha! Go away, Henry. Happy birthday, fathead. You know, Sam, you're probably not aware of it, but there are about 30 people downstairs, and they've come to celebrate your birthday. So far, no one seemed to notice that you're not there, but eventually someone's bound to catch on. I was just wondering what you want me to tell them. I know. I'll just tell them that you're glad they could all make it, and they should all go screw themselves. Is that about it? Oh. Y you're not messing with the goldfish, are you, Sam? Up yours, Henry! Two gallons of holy water against 20 amps of current. We're going to find out once and for all Who's strong, God or science? I'm getting out of here. If he can do it, maybe I can do it. It can't be done at all.
No, Henry, I'm not messing with the goldfish. I wish I never had. Henry? Henry? Ah, Milos. Mm, Henry, where's the birthday girl? Oh, she, she's here. She just couldn't make it. Excuse me, Marilyn. Excuse me. I don't think she's going to come down at all. Here, I've got some. See, it creates compost. Sounds like the name of a ball player, right? Samantha ill? Oh, what a shame! Samantha's ill? Samantha's ill. Oh. oh. Mrs. Stoner doesn't hear very well, especially when she's composing. It's a miracle she heard the child at all. Young Samantha might just as easily have passed on up there. I told her not to do it. Of course you did, honey. What did Dr. Larwin say? He said her hearing will return gradually over the next few days. Oh, thank God. Yeah. He says her senses were pushed way beyond their normal capacity, and that's why she's a little disconnected, huh? You should have talked her out of it. No, you did what you could. Now, all we can do now is to be encouraging and supportive and, and see where she lands. See where she lands? Samantha, the doctor says you're gonna be fine, honey. She can't hear you, Walter. Uh, Samantha, you're gonna be fine, darling. Samantha, am I getting through to you, darling? Honey, mm -hmm. it's no use. Don't yell, okay? She no, can't I'm hear done you. Yet. Samantha, see, now I'm, now I'm yelling. You're gonna be fine, honey. Am I, am I coming through to you? You're gonna be all right, believe me. Samantha! Now she's a miracle worker. It's in yet another phase. One day we're gonna come home and find a nail to a cross waiting to be resurrected. I, I know, I know, I know. Be, be more patient, I understand. But sometimes the child is just, just plain odd. Samantha, you little twit! Young lady, now you come down off there right now. Now, did you hear me? I said, come down off there. Come now. Samantha, come down off there right now. I'm conducting. Let's just remain calm and supportive until we see where she lands. Marilyn, this isn't landing. She's taking off. Catchy tune. Lovely. Henry, uh, Samantha. But uh, you must tell us, uh, what was it? Uh, Stumer's Fifth Symphony. Stumer's Fifth? Stumer's Fifth. Oh. Well, you played it well. Very well. Samantha, what is this? I never lied to you. You are a gifted musician. And a big baby as well. Now, are you coming out of there, or shall we celebrate your birthday without you? What's it going to be? The jolly good fellow. The jolly good fellow. The jolly good fellow. 
come down we decided to bring the party up to you Sam right so what do you say can we come in piss off all of you <laughs> Sam now honey we're coming in okay please let us in right now all right all right fine but I think you should know that if you open that door the gun will go off gun gun what gun a gun oh honey what did she have your musket that old thing doesn't work. Come on, now what? Wait! Just a second, Walter. Just in case it does work. Maybe she really is losing her marbles in there. We can't pull the cork on her. Let me just get outside her window and see what she's got going on in there. And how? We don't have a ladder big enough. Oh, just get her out of there. The, the roof is simple, and then I can just rope down from the chimney. Don't be a fool, Henry. You're gonna break your neck. Just keep her occupied. Get her out of there! Have, have we tried the bathroom door? Uh, no. Good idea. Yeah, Come on. go, go Come to the on. bathroom. Nice try, Dad, but no dice. If anybody has to go, you'll just have to use the bathroom downstairs. Henry! All right, Ivan. Hey, thanks for coming. I want you to meet my pal, Samantha Steak. Oh, hello, Samantha. Hi. Nice to meet you. What a great building. Yes, um, Henry's very lucky. Mm -hmm. Ivan won the Hirschfeld competition last year. Really? Wow, you're kidding. What piece did you play? I had a bit of a concerto. No kidding. Oh, my God. That might just be my favorite piece in the whole world. Really? Mine too. <laughs> Ivan, Ivan, the thing is I'm kind of new at this, so would you just be, be gentle, okay? Oh, yes, of course. Absolutely, yes. Oh. want well for starters they want to cast their own vote well, who's stopping them i just i don't get it i don't know i don't i don't know what i'm Wait, doing wrong what do, you, what do you think this is the dr henry show i can't answer that there are no rules here am i too aggressive is that it no it's not just that well then i i talk too much that's it you don't maybe feel that we're communicating well I think if it were just the talking, we could probably work it out. But I'm too possessive? Yes, but that's not really the problem. Well, what is it? I'm in love with someone else. Mm hmm Did it ever occur to you that maybe you're expecting a little too much? No, no. All I expect from a guy is that he be completely and utterly devoted to me when we're together and, and pining over me when we're not. Oh, well, that's certainly not too much to ask. Good luck. I've, just, I've had it with men, Henry. Come on, Sam. Don't be ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with you. You know... What? 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 You're really very attractive. Uh, Henry! Well, you are. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Strange, no. but attractive. The right guy's gonna come along. Just hang in there. Samantha. Oh, hi, Eric. I have to talk to you. Yeah, I know. It's over. You don't want to see me anymore. How did you know?
It was a fluke, Milos. It's like everything else. I've had it with music. With only one month remaining before your senior recital, you're going to take four years of hard work and throw them in the toilet? You got it, Milos. I'm not a musician. Who told you that? I never was a musician. Sam. And what about Henry? It's his recital, Sam. too. Sam! Sam! Samantha! I will never be a musician. It wasn't meant to be. Oh, look, dear, she's beautiful. She has your nose. And your eyes, darling. She's just too lovable for words. We'll give her the most wonderful life a child could possibly have. Of course, she'll have the prettiest clothes. The nicest toys. The best friends money can buy. And when she's old enough, we'll send her to the finest schools. Unless, of course, she doesn't want to go. Well, then she won't have to. She'll stay at home, watch TV. Invite boys over. Have meaningless sex. Mm -hmm. She'll never have an unpleasant moment. Oh, let's go get her some ice cream. Good idea. We, we love, love you. you. Something dumb like Samantha? Oh, huh? Perfect. Huh? Oh, <laughs> we'll send her to Catholic school. Oh, you know what? We'll what? make her play the violin. Oh, good. That's right. She'll be an outcast, a weirdo. Oh, perfect. She won't have a chance with the boys. And just when she thinks she's had all she can take, we'll tell her she's adopted. Adopted? Oh, that's <laughs> perfect. Oh, honey, she's going to be so unhappy she won't know what hit her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, she's miserable already. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, come on, I hope she's colic. Okay, come on, watch out. Watch this down there. So let the record show that I am not Samantha Stig, the apparent daughter of Walter and Marilyn Stig, but in fact, a nameless victim held hostage for 21 years by two cold-blooded imposters. And I never had a chance. So that's it, Mom and Dad. The water Now is I know off. why I never... The water did. is off. And all this time I thought it was my fault. I have no past, no future, and no choice but to die an anonymous failure. Maybe, Sam. But what if you don't? What? This isn't to criticize, but before you sent me face down into the bushes, I did happen to notice a couple of flaws in your design. Take, for instance, that little eye hook you have over your bed there. Now, it's just my opinion, but I think it's six or eight inches too close to the door. And what about that temperamental ganglia latch that sits above the trigger there? I mean, who knows the last time that sucker was oiled? Ganglia latch. I could be wrong. But what if I'm not? I mean, suppose you've miscalculated and you just lose an earlobe or a um, couple of fingers. Are you prepared to walk around with half a nose? That's enough, Henry. Think about it, Sam. I said cut it, Henry. Hey, what's going on? Who turned off the water? Who turned off the water? No! No!
What you doing up there? I don't know. Did you throw away all the sleeping pills? Mm hmm. And the rat poison and um, razor blades. Insecticide. The liquid plumber. And all the pantyhose I could find. The pantyhose? Mm hmm. I, I don't know, honey. It's, it's something I saw in a prison movie. All right, wh what did you do with my musket? I put it right in the chipper shredder. Okay, well, <clears throat> that about covers it. Samantha? Honey? Samantha, where are you going? I don't know, but I can't stay here. Oh, honey, don't say that. This is your home. This isn't my home. This isn't even my life. Come on, now, come on. What about school? I'm what quitting. Are what do you mean quitting? Yes, and I, I will pay you back every dime. What do you mean pay me back? Honey, where are you going to live? I don't know. Well, when will we see you again? I don't know. How can we get in touch with you? I don't know. What do you know? I know that life stops here until I find out who I am. And you can't help me with that. Samantha, you are not going to ever find them. And I have to try, Mom. Let's go. This isn't just another phase, is it, Walter? No, I don't think so, no. What if we never... Shh, she'll be back. She'll be back, darling. First time she tastes her own cooking, she'll be back. I hope you're right. It's just the way it has to be now. Don't worry. It'll be all right. So I took this theme that I know. your part, I made it absolutely impossible. But uh, let's start here and watch the tempo change. Okay. It's a little piece I like to call Stumer's Fifth Amendment. It goes something little like this. Ready? All set. <laughs> Interesting, but uh, are you sure it's the right piece for the recital? I guess we don't have to play it, but we've been rehearsing it all along. Well, there certainly are better choices. Hi. Oh, uh, Sam, hi. You remember Elaine Callow, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Didn't you graduate? Yeah, a, a couple years ahead of us. That's right. Yeah. Um, Elaine's agreed to fill in for you at the recital while you're trying to find yourself. Oh, great, that's great. <laughs> that's really nice of her. Well, it's nothing, really. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye, Samantha. Oh, goodbye. It was nice to see you again. Yeah, and um, good luck. I hope, I hope you turn up somewhere. So, Henry, what do you think of the name Abigail Harrington? For what? For me. What's wrong with Samantha Stig? Nothing. Well, there's nothing wrong with this. It's not my real name. Seriously, since I don't have anything to go on and, and I, you know, I don't know who I am, I think I should try on some new hats and see if anything fits. Oh, I see. A uh, whole new start. Clean slate, like you were born yesterday, is that the idea? Right. Okay. Abigail Harrington? Yeah. Let's see. Daughter of Cecil and Winifred Harrington. Heiress to the Harrington Empire. 
destined to a life of leisure and luxury. All the best schools, summers in Europe, debutante balls. You would have had it all, Sam. So why didn't I? Well, I suppose as soon as you're old enough to crawl, you tried to blow your brains out with your father's pearl-handled derringer and shot the nanny instead. Your parents couldn't afford another scandal, so they had to get rid of you, and who'd blame them? You're such an asshole, Henry. And you, Samantha, are a fathead. By any name. So why Elaine? She's a professional musician. I'm lucky to have her. Hmm. If your recital piece is turkey in the straw. She's third chair in the city chamber orchestra. Uh, we both know how she got that job. She's a damn good musician. And most importantly, she shows up. So what about um, Esmeralda Guadalupe Gonzalez? <laughs> Not in this lifetime. So who am I? Who are my parents and where in the world are they now? Yes, sweetheart. And we've come to take you home. Home? Really? I thought I'd never see you again. Your mother and I have been training for 21 years for this mission. We even learned karate. Come on, darling. We don't have much time. But what about the stakes? Shouldn't I say goodbye to them? You'll drop them a postcard. Mmm, well, raspberry server. Your favorite. How did you know? Just like we know purple is your favorite color. Mm. Not green, as you may have been told. Mm. And don't believe that nonsense about cabbage and Brussels sprouts. Carrots are your favorite vegetable. You're absolutely right. And you like your men bright, witty, and very physical. Exactly. You guys are amazing. You know everything about me. Of course we do, darling. We're your parents. You don't have much to go on. If you'd been legally adopted, it'd be a lot easier. There'd be records somewhere. I'm not saying it's impossible. People like you have found their parents before. But usually it's when both parties are searching. You need more information. Talk to the Stigs. Why? There might be a detail they forgot to mention that could lead you in the right direction. For example, you said something about a bogus birth certificate. Now, where did that come from? Damn it, Margaret! I thought I told you to get rid of it! No. No. I wish we could be more encouraging. Don't you lose heart, young lady. I haven't. I've been looking for my daughter for 16 years. Why has it been so difficult? Because I left her in the back of a gas station in the men's room. That's horrendous. You don't think I know that? You don't think I haven't been haunted by that memory every day for 16 years? I have. And I will never forget that night. Never. It was 4 o'clock in the morning, and it was 5 degrees above zero, and little... My little Amy... My little Amy was a very beautiful child. <laughs> what did you say your daughter's name was? What? Her name. Um, Amy? Why? Last week, as I recall, her name was Lucy. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. And you left her in a supermarket, not a gas station. Well, I think you're mistaken. Week before that, it was Cindy. It was five below zero, and it's got a toilet paper you wrapped her in aluminum foil. Oh God! Think you're a fraud, oh, pal. Oh. If you ask me, you never ever had a dollar. Sam? Hi. Um, 
I was uh, watching a movie. Something good for the whole family, I hope. Hello, Samantha. Hi. Actually, it's Katya now. Oh. Uh, All right. Katya. Katya Bowenza. Nice to meet you. Oh, Katya, if you see Samantha, will you tell her that this very large package came from her mother today? Samantha, I'm guessing that Henry has been kind enough to put you up, and I thought you might need a few things to get you by until you land a job. So I put together this little care package. Hmm, not bad. Chocolate rundums. Oh, great. Also enclosed, you'll find a wicker basket, the very same one in which you first came to us. I don't believe it. Gosh, she even saved the blanket. Henry, look at this. Do you realize what this means? This is exactly what I needed. It's great, Sam. Throw in a meatloaf sandwich and you got yourself a picnic. Thanks a lot. Samantha, I understand what you're trying to do. You wish you didn't have to, but maybe this will help. Please remember that we love you, and no matter what happens, you will always be Samantha Stick. Michiko Hishikawa? Well, it appears that you're a multi-talented young woman. A dishwasher, courier, gardener, janitor, security guard, house painter. Anything else you can do? Oh, uh, yeah, I used to be a concert violinist. But I don't do that anymore. Uh -huh. Can you handle a stick shift? Yes. this to lead to anything, do you? It's worth a try. I need more information. Oh, Samantha! Henry! How nice to see you! Especially at my age. Hello, Mrs. Higgins. Um, I have a bit of a problem, and I'm wondering if maybe you could help me. Well, I'll certainly try. Oh, great. You see, I'm trying to locate my parents. Mm -hmm. And, well, they're not here, dear. And, and I've been here all afternoon. Oh, uh, no, no, you don't you don't understand. You see, um Oh my, my... am I going to be on TV? <laughs> no, no. This is this is just for my personal use. Just... My friend Millie Millerton was on TV twice. Once when her husband died, and once when her house burned down. Would you mind if I asked you a couple of questions? No, go right ahead. I'm easy. Great. Um, you see, I recently found out that the Stigs are not my real parents. Well, then whose parents are they? I don't know. I mean, I mean, no one's. I mean, they're not, they're not my parents. Um, you see, what happened was, uh, somebody left me on a doorstep 21 years ago, and, and those are my parents. That's who I'm looking for. And since you live right across the street, I thought maybe... Oh, well, they're not here with me, dear. No, uh, no, you don't... Uh, um, Samantha, I may be old, but if they were here, in 21 years, I certainly would have bumped into them once or twice. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Forgive me, Father. It's probably a sin but this conversation's being recorded. I don't know. I mean, people in this neighborhood have been living here for like, you know, 25 years. I'm, of course they've seen something, right? Yeah. No. No, not there, Sam. Come on, honey. No. Don't be such a chicken shit. Grumpers has been dead for years. I don't care. I still have nightmares about that dog. Not Henry, to mention Henry, the pearl mutters. We have to talk to them, okay? What do you want? Hi, Mr. Pearl Mutter. Um, 
I was wondering if maybe I could ask you and your wife a few questions. Certainly not. Where did you get that outfit? It looks like shit. Oh, oh no. It's the ghost of Grover's. show that I am speaking to Walter and Marilyn Stig, recently self-confessed non-parents. Uh, that's it, that's it. I will, uh, come on. I'm, I'm not going to be talked to like a common criminal. I'm not going to do this. All right, all right, all right. I'll strike that last remark. Stricken. And I'm not going to answer another question until you turn that damn thing off. Dad, come on. I need this for my search. Honey. All right. Anyway. Henry, where are you going? You're on your own with this one, fathead. Now, just relax, honey, okay? We promised we would do this. Let's just do it. Thank you. Now, when exactly was I left on your doorstep? Uh, May 19th. At what time? Well, sometime between the morning paper and the afternoon mail. I mean, what the hell difference does it make? What did you do when you first found me? Well, we took you in, uh, and, you know, because you were cold and hungry, and... And then? Uh, we fed you. Then what? Then you made caca in your pants. I mean, what, what, well, well, what kind of question? Did it appear as if I'd been abused in any way? No. No, you weren't abused. Would you describe me as an unhappy baby? Oh, no, honey. Mm. You were so not, sweet. No, not until five days ago, since which time you've become a colossal pain in the ass. A pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. somebody. I think you're starting to short circuit here, Sam. You gotta grab a hold of yourself. I can't help it. I can't help it. I have to do something. Why? What do you expect to gain from all this? I don't know. A reason. You know? An explanation. I mean, why is it that most people begin their lives securely nestled in their mother's arms? And I began mine in a picnic basket on someone's doorstep. I really do understand how hard this must be for you to accept. And up until now, I've been more than willing to put up with your endless nonsense because I really do see how desperate you are to find out where you came from. Hey, that's real compassionate of you. But, Henry. you know what really burns me, Sam? What? Ever since we were kids, all I wanted to be was a musician and it never came easy to me. I had to practice twice as hard as you to be half as good. That's not true. Let me finish. You, you get locked in a belfry and bingo. 
a musical genius is born. You were given, listen to me, an incredible gift. And I never realized how much I resented you for it until I saw you throw it away. I didn't realize you felt that way. Now you know. <laughs> if you insist on trashing everything that you have for something that may not even exist, I mean, that's up to you, but if you ask me, you're pissing in the wind. Sam, being adopted isn't the end of the world. It's not the end of your life. Good night, Sam. Good night. Oh, and one more thing. As long as you're staying at my place, I'd rather you didn't wander around naked. Henry, I'm really sorry. I, I... I thought you were sleeping. I didn't mean to bother you. I didn't say it bothered me. I said don't do it. I'm 21 years old and have only two months to live. Sadly, I've never known the love of my parents. I was left on a doorstep on a May morning 21 years ago. If this sounds familiar and you have any compassion, please contact me before it is too late. Sincerely, help Leslie Ho Ing. Esmeralda Guadalupe Gonzalez. As you know, each week we devote a segment of the news to Thursday's child. Many of these children are orphans, wards of the state, shuffled about between one foster home and the next, and all of them hoping to find parents who will love them. This week's Thursday's Child has a problem of a different nature, which was brought to our attention by an ad that ran in last Sunday's Classifieds. She is a 21-year-old orphan, and she's dying. She, too, is looking for her parents, her biological parents. She calls herself Helplessly Hoping, and she's here with us now to share her remarkable story. Helplessly, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jane. No, the blanket was blue. Helplessly hoping? Right, blue. And the basket was, was wicker. No, 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 wicker. Wicker, not rattan. Helplessly hoping. Look, I'm obviously not your daughter. Helplessly hoping? Well, if you don't like doing the laundry, you should never have given her away in the first place. Helplessly hoping. Well, let me be the judge of that. Um, where is it exactly you want to file? Helplessly huh. hoping, helplessly huh. hoping. What time of day was that? Wait, wait, wait. Uh-huh. Well, I'm sorry, but that's incorrect. What is this, Fathead Central? Yeah, thank you. Helplessly hoping. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Elaine, hi. Hold on a minute. He's here. Hold on. It's for you. Thanks. Hi. Yeah. Well, the phone's been kind of busy today. Helplessly hoping. I may know who you're looking for. Many years ago, though she'd never admit it, Gladys Cray left her baby in a garbage can. 
Sounds like a lovely woman. Oh, I forgot to tell you. The Cornea Institute also called. They can't wait for you to die. <laughs> when would you give your eyes away? I don't know. I don't know. I was tired. They promised me a new VCR. God, I'm starving. Do you want to get some tacos or, or, or Chinese or something? I, I can. I'm meeting Elaine for dinner. Again? I'll leave you the truck, though. The keys are on the dresser if you can get to it. It's the third time this week. Remember, feather the clutch. And don't park in a loading zone or anything. I can't afford another ticket. What's the deal with Elaine all of a sudden? Will you forget about Elaine? I will if you will. Helplessly hoping. I don't know quite how to begin. 21 years ago, I was too young to know it was right. You see, shortly after you were born, your mother left me for another man. I was so grief stricken that I felt incapable of taking care of you, so I wrapped you in a blanket, put you in a basket, and left you with people who seemed to have more to offer than I did. I've regretted it for years and have often wanted to contact you, but never had the courage. Then last year, God granted me a miracle. Sophie came home. We talked about it and, and, and both realized how much we longed to be a happy family again. Now that your tragic end is here, there's not a moment to lose. If you can find it in your heart to forgive me, please respond. Sincerely, Herman Hathaway. Did you hear that? Herman. See that? Mr. Hathaway, Herman. Oh, God. I know Samantha. Milos. I see you're doing well for yourself, especially for someone who's dying. No, no, don't get up on my account. I hate for you to aggravate your condition. What a surprise. You look surprised. Do you have a tissue? I don't think so. Never mind. Life has not been particularly easy for you lately. I know that. I can't make it any easier. I'm sorry I disappointed you. But I will not allow you to make it any worse than it has to be. I want to see you back in my class first thing tomorrow morning, or I don't want to see you at all. Milos. This is your last chance. I advise you to take it. You see, Samantha, I'm of the peculiarly old-fashioned view that degrees should be given only to students who actually attend school. I'm not ready to go back. I can't. Samantha, do you know how many musicians would sacrifice their right arms to have what you have? No, you have no idea, do you? You think this is all just a big mistake. Some kind of terrible curse visited upon you to make your life miserable. Yes, I do. Well, you're wrong. What you've been endowed with is no accident. It's a very rare and precious gift. Something meant to be embraced and nurtured and cherished. Something meant to be celebrated, for God's sake. And until you learn that, you'll never be worthy of the gift. Milos. Oh, by the way, I'll be expecting Samantha Sting, helplessly hoping not be allowed on the premises. I'm coming, honey! I'm coming, baby! 
Your daddy's here. Oh, shit. Slimy little insect. Open the door. You get out of here or I'll call the cops. Open the door. You're not going to call anybody. Get out of here. Coming. All right. OK, OK, I'm coming. That spineless, tiny, amoebic little Sam. bastard. I'd like to cut his balls off Sam. with a serrated carving knife. Samantha! What? Hello, Samantha. What is this, some kind of conspiracy? Now, don't blame Henry. We came here on our own. I don't really feel like talking right now. Well, it's all right. We didn't come here to talk to you. Maybe we better leave, Walter. Wait a Marilyn, wait, wait. maybe not, not just yet, huh? Uh, since she's graced us with her presence, there are a few things I'd like to get straightened out. I don't see what there is to talk about. You've got some hell of a nerve with this attitude of yours. Who do you think you're talking to? Strangers or morons or what? I don't have to listen to this. Oh, oh. Well, you're going to listen. You're going to listen, all right. See, we gave you a loving home, an education, your music. Nobody else gave you that. And I said I would pay you back. That's not the point, Samantha. I mean, we're, we're not looking for gratitude. These are things parents do out of love. And what do you do? Hmm? You turn your birthday into a suicide carnival. You put an ad in the paper humiliating your mother and me. And then you throw away your music to, to deliver pizzas? What business is that of yours? We're here parents. I mean, it comes with the territory. Yeah, let me tell you something else, hopelessly hoping. You can call yourself Walenska, Ishikawa, or Yo-Yo Ma. You'll always be Samantha Stig. She never existed. Our daughter. I'm not! No matter what you think. Get out of my life! You don't mean that. All right, come on, let's go. You know, your father and I have feelings, too. Maybe we should have told you. We're not perfect. We made a mistake. We did the best we could. Here's where I get off this ride. You can cross me off your list, too, because I just don't think it's amusing anymore. Um, Elaine's moving in this weekend, so that gives you and your circus exactly five days to find somewhere else to live. You want to find out what it's like to be alone in this world? Here's your chance, Sam. you a question what was so wrong with me at two weeks old did I cry too much did I have bad table manners why did you keep me that long I'm surprised you didn't bill me for room and board what if they didn't want me what if I died out there? You know, I could have starved to death. Maybe that's what you wanted. Maybe you just didn't care. Well, I've got news for you. I didn't pick you either. At least I've got the guts to admit it. Hello? Elaine, it's me, Samantha. There's no one here by that name. 
No, listen, Elaine, I'm really sorry to wake you, but... What time is it? Beats me. What do you want, Samantha? Elaine, I'm looking for Henry. Is he there? Yes, he's here. Well, can I speak to him, please? He's asleep. Well, would you mind waking him up? It's very important. What? Is one of your little wooden friends running a fever? Elaine, please, just put him on the phone. No, Samantha, if you have something to tell him, I'll give him the message myself. Okay, okay, okay. Just, can you tell him that, I, that I'm sorry and that I miss him? And I think his girlfriend's a real asshole. Adios, amigos. Morning. What are you doing here? The door was locked. I didn't want to wake you. Samantha? Oh, look at this. Hi. Here. <laughs> Honey. Uh, well, were you out here all night? No, no, no. Just a, just a couple hours. Well, you could have awakened us. Sure. I don't know. Actually, this doorstep isn't a bad place to hang out. <laughs> I'm sorry, too, honey. I'm sorry, baby. So it's just good to have you home, darling. <laughs> huh? Look at this. Well, um, <laughs> you hungry? Come on in. Yeah. Let's, let's have some breakfast. This come calls on. for a celebration. Come on, come on. Yeah. You want a beer? I'd love one, Dad. Come on, come on. <laughs> That will just be a second. <sighs> nice place. <sighs> hey. Hey. What happened to Fathead Central? Oh, the search is over. You're giving up? Yeah. Why? Well, because my mother was right. I'm just, you know, I'm not going to find them. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, so am I. Oh, no. Yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe they'll come looking for me. I heard what happened with Milos. Mm. Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll come to your recital and watch. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I'm sorry about all this, Henry. I really am. I don't know how you put up with me. I didn't say I moved out. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Good riddance. I've got a classified section downstairs. Not that there's any in her ear. Yeah. Oh, well, please I, listen, I want to make it up to you, though. Oh, uh, no, no. I want to okay. make you dinner tonight. No, really, I'd prefer that no, you really. didn't, actually. Come on, I'm making an effort here. You know, I'm sorry. I, I know, and, and, I and, and you, you know dinner. how I Anything love your spaghetti you and rum dumps. Anything I, you want, you name it, you got it. Actually, I can't tonight at all, anyway. Why? Is, is it a way? Yeah. We'll bring her along. You serious? Completely. I still don't know why we're doing this. She's just trying to be nice. Look, Henry, I know she's your friend, but quite frankly, I think she's unstable. Maybe even schizophrenic. Oh, come on. Sure, she's a little off the wall, but she's hardly schizophrenic. Don't be so sure. You have no idea who her real parents are. For all we know, she could come from deviant chromosomes. Oh, my God. Do you think we should call an exterminator? Almost ready! No hurry! Henry, I'm serious. Well, then maybe you should call the exterminator. Dinner is served. And then I met this other woman who wanted to be my mother, but only on a part-time basis. And uh, only if I was willing to sleep in her attic and let her call me Snookums. What's worse is that I actually considered her offer. More wine, Elaine? Oh, sure. Why not? I don't know what came over me. I guess I was just... I don't know. I felt that my whole world had sort of collapsed or something, and I, I went a little bit crazy. Well, I'm sure that anyone would have been upset. Well, no, Elaine, I was much more than upset. I was downright unstable. Right, Henry? Yes. Oh, thank you. I'd love some. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyway, now that I've got this whole ordeal out of my system, I'm thinking a lot more clearly. Well, I'm sure that when you don't know where you've come from, it's hard to know where you're going. Exactly, Elaine, exactly. Which is why I've been doing a lot of thinking about where I'm going and what's most important to me. That's great, Sam. Yeah, I know, and, and I've realized that what's most important to me is that I'm in love with Henry. <gasps> oh, I knew it! And although he'd never admit it with you sitting right here, Elaine, I'm quite certain that Henry's in love with me also. Oh, you conniving little bitch! Elaine, where are you going? Elaine, don't leave. We haven't had dessert yet. Elaine! You don't look so good, Henry. What is it? Do you need some help? There. Feeling better?
And where do you think you're going? Hi, I... I, th I thought... Please, Samantha, spare me your thoughts and come inside. But before you do, I need to know something. What? Is this another imposter, or is this the real Samantha Stig? It's the one and only. Me. I think Henry wants to talk to me. What? I don't know what your demented little mind is up to, but there's no way you're playing that recital. What are you talking about? Don't play dumb, Sam. I talked to Milos. What did he say? He said it was up to me. So? So forget about it. I can't do that to Elaine. The recital's tomorrow night. She's got a lot of people coming. Henry, you know what this recital means to me. Hey, but you should have thought of that a couple weeks ago. Just forget it, Sam. It's not gonna happen. And there's nothing you can do to change things between me and you, so stop harassing me. It's not gonna work. <laughs> I disagree, Henry. I think you're on the verge of cracking. Damn it, Samantha. What makes you think you can get whatever you want just by bulldozing anyone that gets in your way? You can't blame me for following my heart. Well, go follow it somewhere else. Don't tell me you don't love me, Henry, because I know you do. Don't tell me how I feel. Just admit it, Henry, you love me. Please, Sam, why do you always have to be so... Just say it. You love me. Yes, I love you. Like a sister. And I like it that way. And I don't know why you had to go and screw up a good thing. Good morning. What do you want? What do I want? Not a thing. I'm here to give you something. 
A gift. It's quite a magnanimous gift, really. What is it? Well, it appears to be a baby's hospital bracelet. Why are you giving it to me? See, the amazing thing is, this little bracelet popped out of your wicker basket a few days ago. And I've been meaning to give it to you ever since, but I've been so busy rehearsing for Henry's music recital that I just plain forgot. What are you talking about? And then, lo and behold, last night I stumbled on it. And I said to myself, this could be important to Samantha. So, here it is, from me to you, with all my heart. Livingston's only three hours from here, and with any luck, you can find Mommy and Daddy before dinner time. I believe the Hall of Records is on Oak Street. Happy hunting, Samantha. Or should I say, Helen? Helen Otto. Helen Otto. It's unacceptable. and I'll call you back as soon as I can. Thanks. Yes, Elaine, this is Mrs. Waters calling from the Livingston Hall of Records. In response to your request, I have located a birth record for Helen Otto, and it matches your information on the hospital ID bracelet. If you'd like a copy of the birth certificate, I can either send you an application or you can apply in person. Thank you. Can I help you? Are you Mrs. Otto? Yes. I'm Helen. Helen Otto. Oh my. What a pleasant surprise. Please, come on in. And the name Cheryl sticks in my mind. Oh, no, dear. That was the Cooperman's baby. Oh, yes, of course. Well, Helen, nice to meet you. How have you been? Okay. So, I suppose you must be 18 or 19 years old by now. 21. According to the birth certificate, I was born in 1970. Where does the time go? Well, you know, she's right. It was 70, honey. That was a very busy year for you and me. We redecorated the house and, oh, that was the year we took that wonderful vacation to Lake Tiatoga, remember? Oh. Wasn't that the year we bought the Austin? I believe it was, yes. What a luxurious car. Mm, I don't believe this. No, really, it had a remarkable ride. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Not at all. Why? The suspension system, I suppose. No. No. Why did you abandon me? Oh. Well. Well, Helen, um, as I recall, Neil and I never planned on having any children, so mm -hmm. when you came along, 
we felt it would be inappropriate to keep you. So we, um, we wrapped you in a nice warm blanket mm -hmm. and we put you in our favorite wicker basket. Oh, mm -hmm. I remember that basket. We used to take it on picnics, concerts at the park. Mm -hmm. Oh, those were lovely afternoons. Oh, it was a wonderful basket. You know, I once fit an entire turkey in that basket. Turkey. And a cucumber salad. I love <laughs> that salad. Uh, why didn't you just put me up for adoption? And give you to just anybody? Hmm. No. We wanted more for you than that, dear. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, Helen, you were our daughter. So what made you think the Stiggs would want me? Stiggs? We didn't leave you with any sticks. We gave you to that nice couple we met at Tayotogo. Mm -hmm. What was their name? Perlmutter. I'm certain of that. That's right. Ed and Phyllis Perlmutter. Lovely couple. Mm. Oh, and they had that cute little doggy. What was his name? Oh, um, gee. Grumpers. Grumpers. <laughs> That's right. Ed, Phyllis, and Grumpers. They seemed like a lovely family. Well, w Walter and Marilyn Stig is who I ended up with. Hmm. Could we have gotten the address wrong? Possibly. But I'm sure it all worked out for the best. Now, Helen, come see us again. You're welcome here anytime. And say hello to your folks, whoever they are. Flowers. Oh, really? Yeah. But hurry, we're up next. Okay. We're on in ten minutes. What are you doing on the phone? I know. I'm trying to read Samantha. Why in the world would you want to talk to Samantha? Elaine, who's Helen Otto? Helen Otto? Mm hmm. You got me. Well, some woman called from Livingston about a, a birth certificate and something about a, a hospital bracelet? Oh, right. Helen Otto. Uh -huh. I was just doing a little research for Samantha. Research for Samantha? I, f I was cleaning up her junk and I found this the hospital bracelet. And you kept it from her? I gave it to her last night. The night before the recital? Henry, you may not care if she sabotages your recital, but I wasn't taking any chances, okay? What the hell is the matter with you? What do you mean? Elaine? Samantha may have her faults, but she still happens to be my friend. Well, that's your problem, Henry. No, Elaine. 
Now it's our problem. Shit. Henry, I'm locked in. Henry, I'm locked in. Open the door. Hurry, we're on soon. Come on, Henry. Come on, open the door, Henry. Henry? Henry? This isn't very funny, Henry. No. He should have been here 10 minutes ago. Henry, where the hell have you been? Where's the lane? We're in trouble. Listen, do you remember the Beethoven trio? Because we are now a threesome. You've got to be kidding. No, no. We haven't played that piece in over a year. I know, but we're just going to have to do the best we can. Dig up the sheet music. And... Hendrix, I need to borrow your bike. I need to borrow it. Now where's he going? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Henry, aren't you up next? What are you doing here? I was just about to ask you the same thing. I came to see your recital. What happened in Livingston? How did you know about that? Well, Elaine told me. So, did you find out what you're looking for? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But not in Livingston. <laughs> Did I miss something? I'm sorry. But... No, Dad, no. Hmm? It's nothing. Oh. Well, here's what? the deal. We've got an empty chair up there now, and we need a violinist. What do you say? What are you talking about? Where's Elaine? Uh, Elaine's having an anxiety attack, and she locked herself in the dressing room, and she refuses to come out. You're oh. kidding me. It's too bad. No. Well, think about it. I, ca I can't. What do you I can't. say? I can't. I can't. Because Elaine's practice well, really hard for this. Money. But she practiced and she do played it, it all the time. We'll think about it. You told me oh, and you're I right. Feel bad. Okay, we'll do the trio. But it's no problem, really. I can work something out. Well, here's so, your violin. Well, who's is this? That's Hendrix. back. Find one. I'll be back in an hour.
Darling, we're gonna do it. We're gonna. We have an expert working on this. Flying in. Now just calm down, okay, honey? Breathe. And oh, do you know a little song you can hum or something? Take your mind off it, because I have every confidence. All set at this end, Milos. Okay. Do you really think this is gonna work? If anyone can do it, we can do it, or it can't be done at all. Hit it, fathead. <laughs> <laughs> 